and welcomes us all over again into the promise of eternal life in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.
Isaiah, the 52nd chapter. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, you sentinels, lift up your voices. Together they sing for joy. For in plain, plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together in singing for your, your ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has confronted his people, comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Depart, depart, go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Go out for the midst of it. Purify yourselves, you who carry the vessels of the Lord. For you shall not go out in haste. You shall not go in flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus called them and said to them, 
You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers, lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. They came to Jericho as he is, and his disciples in a large crowd were leaving Jericho. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. <coughs> When I was a kid, one of my favorite board games was shoots and ladders. Each player travels the board, hoping to land on the ladder and advance quickly, wary of the shoots that would send them tumbling back toward the start. It was a game of chance more than skill. The roll of the dice determined which path each player would take. It was one of those games where you took two steps forward and one step back eventually making progress, but not without a few setbacks along the way. This game pretty much sums up the life of Jesus' disciples. They stumbled along Jesus' side. His faithful companions, they saw and heard it all. Yet so often they failed to understand, failed to get the point. Today's reading is an example. Jesus is traveling with his disciples on their way to Jerusalem. They were amazed at all they had seen Jesus do, healings and miracles, important faith teachings. They had come to realize that Jesus was the Messiah. They are climbing the ladder to understanding. Then after Jesus tells them for the third time about awaits him in Jerusalem, his suffering and death, they seem to ignore the dire predictions. James and John step forward and ask if Jesus would do something for them. Jesus turns and asks what they want, and there you have it. Boom, down the chute they go. We want to be elevated to the place of the most importance. We want the best seats in the house, they ask. <coughs> Jesus is stunned. How dare they ask to be first? If there had been a wall nearby, Jesus most certainly would have been banging his head on it. Instead, he calmly reminds them that it's not about their position. Don't be like rulers and those in authority. Don't use your power to oppress others. Don't pretend you're better than everyone else. Gee whiz, he must have grumbled. I thought I taught you better than this. Have I ever talked about my celebrity, my stature, my position of power? Forget about how it's always been. I've come to change all that. If you want to be first, you must be servant of all. Why? For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many, he said. And then silence. We're left to assume they must have hung their heads in embarrassment and walked quietly for the rest of the trip. The next scene is one of a healing as Jesus gets back to the work that he was sent to do. He heals the blind man who came to him in faith to be healed, who saw what the disciples could not. His faith allowed him to see who Jesus really was. 
Jesus asked the same question of them. What do you want me to do for you? The disciples had asked for status, for privilege. Bartimaeus asked for mercy and healing. He recognized his, lead, his need, his lack of vision, and he asked to see again. He recognized that Jesus was a person of love and mercy who would heal his ailments. Two different visions of Jesus, two different understandings of our relationship to God. One which is self-serving and one looking for greatness. The other was used to faith to come into relationship with Jesus and join in the work to come. The disciples had a little bit more learning to do until they were fully realized that the world was bigger than them, that their needs and wants were far below the needs of others. Through scriptures such as this one, we too learn that serving others is a calling. We too learn that it is the grand purpose in our lives, that we've been called by God for a specific purpose. And as our scriptures tell us, God has given us all a variety of gifts to be used, not for our own purpose, but for God's purpose. Now most things in life do have a purpose, and I brought along some of my kitchen utensils. Some of the Sunday school kids will recognize this from our lesson downstairs. And we talked about a spoon being a server, and we tried to serve spaghetti with it, and it didn't really work. It slid off, as you would imagine. And we tried a spatula. It's another good server. Right? Oh, that was even worse than the spoon. It barely got one little strand on. And then, then we used this. This spaghetti server. I don't know what its real name is, but my spaghetti server. And it was made for the purpose of getting things like spaghetti out of the pot, into the serving, or into your dish, right? That is its purpose, right? Now, I can eat spaghetti if I didn't have this, because many of you don't have it, and we can eat spaghetti. But it certainly makes it a whole lot easier, right? This important little piece of plastic has a big role in my kitchen. It's important when I use spaghetti that we have this, right? And I'm so blessed. And we need to be reminded that whether you're a spoon or a spatula or a spaghetti server, we all are made for a different purpose. We all have our purpose in life, right? The spatula is great for pancakes or lasagna or baked ziti, right? And our spoon is good for vegetables, or maybe the sauce, getting a little extra sauce on our pasta. Okay? So everything has its purpose, just like we do. And thank God for that. And no two of us are created exactly the same. But we do have a few things in common. One of them is that we are not here for our own glory, to be exalted over others, but for the glory of God. It's not easy in these times when we're surrounded by celebrities and politicians claiming how great and wonderful they are, how much better they think they are than the next person. So one of our other purposes is to remind ourselves and others that God is above all. Not us, not now, not ever. Our faith in God calls us into service to others, not to show how great we are, or to earn points to get on God's good side. Because Jesus already did all of that for us. We serve because our faith calls us to look beyond our own self-interest. We're not here to demand to be taken care of by others, to be made great or even greater than others. We're called to witness to our Lord and to serve our fellow man, woman, and child, each in our own unique way but always to serve above all else. I offer my thanks to all of you here today who are called to service, to those who raise, teach, and mentor our children, to those who serve as first responders or in the armed forces, those who provide healing and protect us from danger, 
to those who work tirelessly in our food pantry shelters and other places where the least of us go for safety, warmth, and sustenance. To those in our combined communities whose generosity is beyond measure, who respond time and time again to the needs of our community members. Thank you for your service to our community. It is appreciated more than you will ever know. And thanks to all of you present today who understand and model what Jesus teaches us, that we are called, first of all, to serve one another with gladness. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Help us to see the many ways in which scripture has been used to marginalize those living with disabilities, that we might be intentional about welcoming and affirming every single child of God as they are. God of the journey, in, in mercy, mercy hear our prayer. With gratitude, we remember those who shared with us stories of lives transformed by your love, teaching us by their example that your love can change us in powerful ways. God of the journey, in mercy, hear our prayer. Confident that you walk alongside us in need, we lift to you all our prayers, spoken and unspoken. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
generous God, you demonstrate your greatness by providing us with everything we need. In humility and gratitude, we return you a portion of these gifts. Accept them, we pray, for use and service to others according to your will. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. What is it you want me to do for you? We want to be praised for God's strength. Are you willing to sacrifice everything for the good of others? Everything. We are not certain. That is what it means to be great in God's reign. Then it is only you, Jesus, who are great. great. Which means I am here to serve you, right now, in whatever way you need. Have mercy on us, Jesus. What is it you want me to do for you? Open our eyes so we might love and serve you better.
Um, so we'll have our service, we'll grab a cup of coffee, something to eat, and then come back and we will do our um, forum. So please join us for that. Um, thank you so much to the Bells. Wonderful. So we have some new members, which is awesome. So thank you so much. And as always, our, our regular choir. Uh, we're down a couple, but that's good. Still, our voices in song. Are there any other announcements? Um, okay, please rise as you are able. And remember to join us for some coffee and coffee following the service. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.